Hi there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice, and welcome back to our second installment of Let's Talk Stick Friday for the year 2022. So, today we're going to be using watercolor pencils, and I am in the testing phase for Brunzil Holland, Reich's Museum collection of watercolor pencils. There are 24 of them. Um... <clears throat> And we are going to be using these on mixed media paper um, for this particular video. And I did go ahead and do some swatching for the pencils and a little color mixing chart. Of course, we'll get into all of that once the review is out. But of course, I want to get some paintings under my belt before I offer that review. Uh, I have not done the swatch sheet to go inside my tin, so I'm just going to sit that up at the corner of my desk so I've ever referred to it. The pencils do not come with any name or numbers on them. So I have a numbering system, which I developed for them. It's just one through 24 for the total number of pencils that's in here after I put them in a rainbow order. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this. We're just gonna slide these to the side. And I actually have, um, a 36 count of uh, Marco Ruffini color pencils sitting out on my desk too. I'm in the testing phase for those. May or may not end up using those. I'm not exactly sure. So, but I think I wanna do a landscape with you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. So I grab a ruler and we are gonna go ahead and put in the horizon line here. And I'm actually starting higher on the paper than I normally do. Um, because I, there's going to be a lot in the foreground for this particular painting. Um, of course, you guys know we're doing a landscape here. I'm just doing a little basic sketching that way I can remember the direction that I want to go in as I start to fill in the paper with the pigment from the color pencils. Um, now, this entire week, you guys are going to get a landscape demo out of me. Um, we had one for Water Soluble Wednesday. We're having one for this Let's Talk Stick Friday. And um, this Sketchbook Sunday coming up, or Mixed Media Sketchbook Sunday coming up, will also be um, a landscape. And then I'm probably going to move on to try to incorporate a few more difficult elements in it. But I think I'm starting to get a good grasp for kind of mapping out and being able to see the different elements in one. So uh, I've had been having fun, and I decided that I would really give these pencils a really good test, use a few different colors, see what the earth-based colors were like, um, the earth tone colors, should I say, were like um, how the pigment would disperse and how they would handle. Now, you know, guys know that I always use a water brush um, when I'm using, well, at least 98% of the time when I'm using watercolor pencils and that uh, synthetic head really helps to push the pigment around and let you have some pretty good control. So you saw that I used the water brush to disperse the pigment from the colors in the sky um, in the water that I colored in. And those colors that I used, or the pencils gave me sort of a cerulean blue and an ultramarine blue. Um, and this in the sky and in the different ponds uh, of the water in the foreground. And then the green for the land was, uh, I don't know, like a, a yellow green or grass green. And then I used two shades up or two steps up from that, um, which kind of gave me more of a, a true green, uh, a deep green maybe. Used that to put in shadows. The yellow ochre color and the burnt sienna color were used to kind of emulate some little land patches. And then, of course, there is the entire land strip that is going uh, across the foreground that's dividing the two puns from each other. Um, and along the horizon line, I decided to kind of sketch in a little house. I'm trying to add more elements in. And then a couple of fir trees, um, just kind of grouping them in at different spots of the horizon. Uh, I'm going to put a really big one in the back of the house to just kind of round all of that out. 
and uh, I sketched that on with like the true green color and I went back in and threw in a few shadows with the dark green and after I disperse that with water and we get around to doing the highlights you will see how I tackle that um, decided to throw some rocks in because you know I'm becoming I like the rocks I, I feel like they are a easy way to add quick elements to you know a sort of basic landscape to spew it up a little bit so I went on and threw in some rocks and then I'm just gonna take a water brush and disperse the pigment along everything that I painted in after the first layer dried, that being the house, the trees, uh, the rocks that I put um, in. And uh, yeah, those, those, these rocks here in the front though, notice I'm gonna push the pigment along the front of it, shaping it so that you can tell there's two different distinct rocks. And all of these things are that I'm trying to learn to pay attention to because I know it's little things like that that add the realism to uh, painting. Now, you're going to see me grab um, the pencils, and I'm going to sort of use the lid as a palette by pulling uh, pigment directly from the lid with my water brush just to go in and darken and give more saturation to the color that is emulating the grass on the land. Um, I do believe that's the only color that I'm going to be painting directly from the lid with. Yeah, just the greens. Um, it, And I'm enhancing sort of the horizon line, just kind of putting a few little distant bushes and shrubs in there back behind those trees. Uh, you're going to see me go in and, oh, enhance the little strip of land with some more of that color that was burnt sienna or maybe like a Venetian red or Indian red. It's in that family of brown, reddish browns. Um, so that all worked out really nicely and you're gonna see me just go back and continue to add more layers to my rocks in order to get them darker um, and more saturated. And then eventually I'm gonna grab some white gouache because you guys know that's what I use most times for highlighting. And um, I'm gonna go in and highlight. As I do that, I am gonna throw in some shadows under those rocks in the water i almost forgot it first and i'm glad i caught that because i don't want to con continue to forget to do that helps to ground those rocks into that water make it look real not so cut and paste and then i'm going to take that gouache and i'm putting on highlights i'm itching in the water line around the land mass i'm going to put in highlights in the water so it'll look like there's a few sparkles there to enhance the waves. You're gonna see me highlight the top of the rocks for the direction in which the light is coming. And I'm also gonna throw some highlights in the trees to offset the mid-tone as well as the darks that are back there. Um, I'm gonna sign it. And then here we'll remove the paper. Um, remove the paper, Lord, remove the tape. And I'll see you guys on the other side. So there you have it guys, a completed landscape with the Brunzil Holland watercolor pencils. Um, turned out pretty nice. I really like the pencils. I made a startling discovery while I was using these pencils um, and I was shooting this video, which lets me know that with the particular paintings I've already done and the swatching, I am ready to go ahead and review these pencils because lo and behold, I've already had these pencils and I've already used them. And I will tell you exactly what I mean once I actually do the, rev video, the review video for the pencils. So, take another look at them. Um, and I've been using them and testing them out and came to a startling discovery today. Ooh, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. But that was the Brunzel Holland Ricks Museum 24 count of watercolor pencils that we, I used to do that. Um, and of course you guys use whatever you had on hand if you want to go back and look at the video and follow along. Well, if you liked anything that you saw um, or if you're excited about the review and figuring out what I'm talking about, don't forget to go ahead and hit that thumbs up. It gets me in front of more viewers. Um, don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at a thousand and I'm pushing. Please remember to share the video. Remember that sharing is caring and it's gonna help the channel grow. Take advantage of the comments section let me know what you thought of this uh, painting. Have you used these pencils? What do you think the surprise about these pencils might actually be? 
Um, head on over to the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page and Instagram page. Like and follow us there. Remember, you can share your works of art on the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page. And as I tell you guys at the end of every single video, just keep painting. <laughs>